This is the best and worst year for Call of Duty because it has some of the best improvements we've ever seen, but in a very specific area. And it is the worst in everything else. And it's really proving to be the aimless Call of Duty mystery is starting here. And the future of the franchise is kind of in the air for me. But we're going to talk about all of that in this video and how it pertains to you if you're still thinking about the purchase or if you're just curious about opinions on what is happening. Hi, welcome. This is an actual review of Modern Warfare 3. This is not a video trashing the game and saying how bad it is. There are other people who do that. This is not a video overhyping the game and giving you that final push that you need to purchase it. This is actual feedback, both good and bad, on the game, attempting to inform you, if you're still on the fence, if this game is going to suit your specific wants and needs or not. And additionally, it's a video where I will just talk about all the things that I think are good and bad. The good because it needs to be praised so that it continues, and the bad because it needs to be hammered down and eliminated. I am not a COD tuber nor an aspiring one, I am just me. So hey, I'm Mug Thief a person that plays too many games and thinks too much about them and then I talk about all of those things I think here on the channel. I use all that overthinking and all the experience I have with games to bring a unique perspective I hope. In this case I am definitely not a casual Call of Duty enjoyer but I am not 100% dedicated to this, this is not my job, this isn't my career. But I think that opinion is equally important because most people who play this game or are curious about it do not play it as much as the people who have it as a job. There are chapters on this video in case you only want to hear the bad or the good for some reason. But let's start off with two negatives that have nothing to do with the multiplayer, which are campaign and zombies. Campaign is a disgrace. It's a complete garbage fire. Call of Duty campaigns, I think, are really important, especially to the average Call of Duty enjoyer, because you come home, you get to play a nice four to six hours bombastic Michael Bay type of thing. A lot of people are very attached to these characters and their stories, and they are generally very good and very fun. And this is the worst one we've had possibly ever. I think I'm quite sure that ever. I understand it was done in a reduced production schedule, but it just doesn't live up to any of the expectations that anybody could have about a campaign. I don't know if those more open missions, as they say, were the intention from the start or a way of recycling content and getting more missions and more gameplay out of what they could but it's just really disappointing. Looking at what I've seen online, I think it's more apt to blame Activision and their obligation to their shareholders and their stupidity to release a game like this with the campaign, despite not having the production time to actually execute that vision. If this were an additional campaign included in a $40 to $50 expansion, I think it would be much more forgivable, but this is the continuation of the Modern Warfare story, and as a proper campaign that sits next to all of the other ones, it's bad. I did not finish the campaign, but I did watch the ending on YouTube for the famous scene after you finish the campaign. I played about two hours, so roughly between half and a little bit more of the campaign, and I just didn't want to play it. That's the first time ever that I've wanted to not finish a Call of Duty campaign, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this is a bad call, I think, and, and Modern Warfare 3 wants to avoid being called an expansion. It wants to be, you know, a mainline, big boy game. And the multiplayer kind of actually doesn't disappoint in that area. It's the campaign for me that really holds it back from actually being a full-fledged Call of Duty game, and I didn't expect that. I think this game would have done great without a campaign at a reduced price, and many people would have felt much better about it. But this is the world we live in, and it's bad. Zombies. So DMZ the previous extraction mode from Modern Warfare 2 has been reworked into the Zombies mode. I am a Zombies enjoyer, but not a Zombies lover. I am not deep into Zombies, but I understand why people are, and I thought the Cold War Zombies mode was pretty fun. However, the Zombies community has been complaining for a very long time that we have not reached the heights that we saw with the Black Ops series, and if you are in that camp of people that really misses the Black Ops Zombies, 
This is not for you. Straight up, you could find some fun in it, but I think it's really difficult to find it fun unless you're looking for a completely different experience or you're already somebody that kind of likes zombies and kind of likes DMZ. In that case, you will find a lot to enjoy. You and a team of friends can have a lot of fun with the more DMZ-like aspects, with looting and extracting and completing quests while you take down the big zombies and explore the map. And the way that zombies progression ties into the multiplayer is also pretty well done since if you don't want to do multiplayer or if you're just a zombies player just extracting with things is how you unlock them and you have your full suite of camos for zombies i think there's been a lot of intention put into designing this mode the best they can considering it's kind of a recycling mishmash of different ideas i'm not sure it's good i think that if what i'm describing appeals to you you can have a lot of fun, but it's definitely not for people who are looking for those black ops zombies. That is not what you're getting here at all. So I personally think it's kind of fun. I don't have friends interested in zombies, so I can't have that more group oriented, fun, chill zombies experience with them. So this isn't for me. I think overall it's bad because they're marketing zombies as one of the three pillars that Call of Duty has every year, but this isn't zombies and it also isn't DMZ. So I don't know if they're going to satisfy anybody with this, but hey, let me know in the comments below if you're one of the zombies people what you thought of the mode. I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to say. Now, the bigger part of this review is the multiplayer. I'm a big fan of Call of Duty multiplayer. I think most people who play these games play them for the multiplayer. Warzone tried to change that, but we don't talk about Warzone, especially I don't talk about Warzone. There is a lot of good in this multiplayer and there is a lot of bad. Some quick disclaimers, I did make it all the way to level 55 in order to do this review, get a good sense of the multiplayer, the, all the weapons, the balance and how everything is shaking out, but it's still early days. so. Everything is subject to change, but I think I'm going to be quite comprehensive and it would need a lot of transformation for it to change at this point. I'm not the best player and I played the entire multiplayer very casually, as in I think I wore headphones for maybe two or three hours of my total playtime. Most of it was with podcasts in the background, just grinding through it. And even though a lot of lobbies were sweaty, I never really encountered too many problems and just grinded my way through. So you'll excuse some of the gameplay that I put in the background, depending on how much of it I need if I ran out of decent clips. And I want to start with the good first. I think Sledgehammer is undoubtedly the best Call of Duty studio, and Infinity Ward is the worst one. Because Treyarch is better than Infinity Ward at this point. I did enjoy Cold War more than I enjoyed Modern Warfare 2, and I definitely enjoyed Vanguard a lot more than i think most people and world war ii as well i think sledgehammer makes great games they really understand how to make call of duty very arcadey and fun and at this point in time with modern warfare 3 they are finding a really good balance taking from the other two studios' take on multiplayer with their core gameplay which i think is the best to create something that is the best version of Call of Duty. It's not all the way there because, you know, you have to step on yourself at some point making Call of Duty games. You need to make the community angry. Otherwise, you're not a real developer. But it's the damn best that they've done in a while. And this is neither here nor there, but if this is the structure that Activision wants Call of Duty to stay on, I don't know how things are going to change under Microsoft. They should just make Infinity Ward make a campaign, Treyarch make zombies, and let Sledgehammer handle multiplayer. That would be the ideal thing for me. So what are all of these positive changes and things that Sledgehammer are taking from other Call of Duty games and refining of their own that makes it so good, in my opinion? Increased time to kill, 150 HP, a very Treyarch thing. First time Sledgehammer falls into this camp, and I think the balancing and the way that the game works is magnificent. The movement, just pumping up the movement to what it was in Modern Warfare 2019, 
Sometimes it feels like a little bit more than that even. Combined with that TTK means that this game is much more a game about skill and firefights. You will find yourself not getting kills because the person managed to slip away with some good movement at the last second, and so will you. And it leads to very clutch plays and very fun respawns. You always have a chance to come back in a firefight. It sometimes feels a lot more tactical playing around enemies' reloads and just the ability to get out of danger get into cover, you and your opponent heal up, and you kind of challenge each other again. It doesn't feel like it's just a whoever spotted each other first frag fest. And some people really like that about Call of Duty, but I think that's just a little bit too mindless. I don't want Call of Duty to be Rainbow Six Siege or Valorant, but I do want to think about it a little bit, because if I don't have to think about it at all, I kind of don't really feel like I get into a good flow state with the game because I'm not being challenged. It feels like random. Like I either got seven kills in a row because I was in a good spot and was aiming right, or I just died because somebody spawned behind me. And in this game, even when somebody spawns behind you, which doesn't happen, we'll talk about that in a second, you could challenge them. You could win that fight. And that feels really good. It also leaves a little bit more room for balancing on the weapons. And I think the overall weapon balance feels healthy. There's a couple of outliers, as there always is, but the balance here at launch, I've played almost all of the weapons, and I think maybe three of them are a little bit overpowered. The spawn system, I don't think it's perfect, and I do have a very specific complaint. I think some of these maps are not meant for 6v6. There's maps here where, you know, derail, quarry, wasteland, just the bigger maps they just need more people, especially on objective based modes. You play quarry and you spend so long without seeing anyone. You're just running around the map. And if you get into a lobby where people are camping, where there's just people setting up on power positions and taking an entire side, even if you're not playing to win, it's just boring. You just can't get kills. It just feels like an impossible run into a crossfire of six people because there's no incentive to push. There's not enough people moving around. And I think that's kind of boring and, and it ruins the pace. This is Sledgehammer, so I'm hoping that they'll take note of that and add an 8v8 or even a 10v10 for some of these maps. Maybe change some playlists. Maybe only have certain maps with this increased combat pacing like they did in Vanguard, that would be fantastic and would fix a lot of these problems. But when it comes to the spawn system, my god, for the first time since Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, it feels like I'm playing classic Call of Duty. It feels so good, man. When it's working, it's awesome. Listen to me. You can push into the enemy spawn. And as long as it's not your whole team pushing into it, much like it was back in the day, the spawns will not flip. I'm going a little bit in-depth in the Call of Duty community, but I really want to praise exclusive Ace, who made a video about this, and apparently that video was being studied and viewed by the people at Sledgehammer for balancing. Exclusive Ace, you are a saint to the Call of Duty community. Thank you for everything you do. When he reported on the spawns and how they had changed the spawn logic for this game, he undersold it. It works so well as a baseline. Sure, it can be refined and tuned even further, but you feel like you can control the map, you can choke out people into their spawn, you can kind of spawn trap. It's, it's really well balanced. It feels tactical. Like I said, your whole team can't just rush people down. But you can, as a player, as a single individual, run into the enemy spawn and kind of hide back there and get kills and force them to react to you without the spawns flipping. I mean, even a couple of people can kind of do that if they, bo if they don't both push so far in. And I think that's great. It feels intentional, doesn't feel like a glitch, like it kind of felt sometimes in Vanguard when this happened, because the spawns move around because there is a person in your spawn, so you don't spawn on top of them, but you still spawn on that side of the map with clear divisions. You know what your side of the map is, you know what the enemy side of the map is, so you can 
process the three lanes or however you want to run throughout the multiplayer map and plan what you want to do in this next respawn accordingly knowing that there is a predictability to where the opponents are coming from that leads to a logic and how you navigate the map where you aim and what you do it feels so good and i don't think it feels good for the sake of nostalgia i think this is just how these games should always be so if you're newer to the series i think you're probably going to love these spawns and if you've been with the series a long time you know what i'm talking about and you're excited for it maps these are 16 maps from modern warfare 2 i think that's cool but it's not my favorite thing in the world there are a lot of winners here there are some losers here it's nice and nostalgic but nostalgia wears off i like exploring a whole new suite of maps normally with these games and it feels kind of disappointing to just have a lot of remakes they're not bad maps they're just not new some people will love that i love that but like i said they kind of wear out for me a little fast just because i know what these maps are i've been on them before it's fun to see them brought back again some of these maps are great and play excellently but i do want more of that original stuff that will be coming down the line but not having any new maps here at launch i think is a shame i also think a lot of these maps are better at what they do than uh, the shipments and the shoot houses that are probably going to be brought back really quickly but you know opinions i already said that most of the weapons feel very balanced but i do want to point out a couple of things i don't know how everything is going to work out with the carry forward system that brings everything from modern warfare 2 and has rebalanced it for the modern warfare 3 multiplayer i'm not sure if i love that idea i also want to mention attachments because when modern warfare 2 came out i thought it was a very noble goal if not one that was 100 percent achieved to make each weapon unlock specific attachments that you could use across the category the whole unlock system there was designed to keep the overall weapon leveling low but not have it be filled with a lot of meaningless copied content and just have everything work with everything and that carries over into modern warfare 3 so now you can choose between nine silencers that you're not sure what they do like they will tell you like well this one increases damage range and this one reduces it but increases bullet velocity and this one harms your ads speed a little bit more than this other one but like how is that really tangible and there's just so many of the same things like there's 19 lasers at this point because you're accumulating the new lasers with the ones from modern warfare 2 so now there's all sorts of lasers and they all do kind of the same thing there's so many optics that are just you know aesthetic and the ui people have said this all like for a long time ui is trash and i think that when you talk about the attachments and specifically about optics it's the biggest example there comes a point in this game where you will have 10 12 optics that are all just one time magnification right it's just better sight but it doesn't have any zoom to it and you just have to scroll past all of this to get into the next section uh, and, and then find, you know, the hybrid ones or the thermal ones or the night vision ones or the zoom, different zoom ones, variable zoom ones. There's so much stuff and it's just this long continuous line. And if this is going to be the system of carry forward, I can't wait for 2025 when I have 72 one times optics that I have to scroll through to get to anything with a zoom. What is this? How can you guys think that this is good? Give us vertical drop-down menus for each thing, man. Give us, like, a drop-down, specifically something like optics or, like, muzzles that's just, like, silencers. And I see all of the silencers in a nice separate menu. Give us optics, one-time zoom. These are all of the ones so that you can choose which one you like the way it looks more because they are all practically identical. And it means that a lot of the unlocks kind of don't matter unless they are exclusive or really strong like you still have to do that modern warfare 2 thing where you have to go level up a different gun to unlock something for the gun you're currently leveling because it's really good that idea kind of solid execution here garbaggio stop it but aside from that i'm making this video confusing because i put a really big negative for me right in the middle of the positive section or the middle section balance of guns there's a lot of guns here that are really fun 
There's more than what it looks like on paper because the conversion kits are actually very transformative. And I really like the idea of unlocking conversion kits and having them as weekly challenges or as seasonal challenges because they kind of function like a completely different gun. Some of them do not. So the MCW, one of the main assault rifles, has a conversion kit to blackout. So it makes it silenced, lowers the damage a bit, changes the fire rate a bit, makes it more submachine gun like. Um, that's kind of a, a different type of assault rifle. It does feel like a different assault rifle, though. So that's still a meaningful change. If you like the MCW, but you would like it to be more different than what attachments normally allow you to do. But some other ones are very transformative. Um, the Pouillemont, I believe, is the name for the heavy machine gun that has a bullpup conversion kit and that allows you to well instead of having this big heavy machine gun that's really strong it's a really good weapon but it's very balanced by how immobile it makes you it allows you to turn it into a bullpup with a fast reload time and a lot better mobility much closer to an assault rifle at the cost of having it be very unwieldy and have a lot of recoil and you kind of have to adjust to that which is makes sense we've had this sort of thing before right if you just had an rpd and made it no stock or something but having these conversion kits that just kind of dramatically change the gun feels special as an unlock and as something to include often in the seasons especially if they're going to be like this it's just cool to grab a gun that you already like and to play it in a very different way and it works towards those same challenges, so it doesn't bloat up the weapon list. I do think that's another minor complaint. I feel like a lot of these weapons are just the same weapon, but in a different category sometimes. Like, oh, well, we got the MCW in the assault rifle, but we also have it in the battle rifle. And one of the conversion kits is to make the battle rifle an assault rifle so it's just you just gave me a conversion kit to make the battle rifle mcw into the already existing assault rifle mcw obviously they play differently but it kind of feels redundant but there's other great examples of this so two of the pistols the conversion kits one of them is a carbine conversion kit that makes it into a two-shot burst a lot more range a lot more damage turns it into a pretty good kind of submachine gun quite unique would fit in as a submachine gun as itself except it's a secondary i think that's a little broken but i prefer that i, I prefer when things are broken and then toned down because it's fun and the same thing with the renetti which you can transform into an smg and basically into the best smg in the game if you just apply the conversion kit to make it an smg that's fun and the fact that they're looking to implement a conversion kit a new one every week is a great idea as long as they are transformative. If they make you want to go into a gun and be like, oh, this is cool, this is slightly overpowered, this is very unique in the game, more of that, please. Which, by the way, pistols and shotguns, I think, are really well balanced. I'm the type of person that starts off my, my yearly camo grind with pistols and shotguns, and I think they work well. Uh, the philosophy I feel with pistols has been that they feel like they have the same exact time to kill as they did before so they're just buffed and i think that's good and it adds another element to the gameplay that i think is very interesting because they feel very viable as a main weapon if you really wanted to to use that and utilize mobility because they do give you a lot of mobility but they're really good as a secondary weapon now um i already did this before but, you know, running out of ammo and then switching to your pistol mid-fight to finish somebody off always felt more challenging in the previous games. Here it feels like what it should, if that makes any sense. Like, yeah, this is meant to, you know, I, I put in four bullets in you and now I put one pistol bullet in you, not two, not three, and you go down. And that's how they should be balanced, in my opinion. Shotgun's kind of the same. Uh, they're very restricted in range so far. I haven't found a way to break shotguns but normally you can but of course that's balanced because but before with higher time to kill you would often find yourself hitting somebody once and then having to dodge while you rechamber and then you know hit the second shot and those situations are much better for the shotgun user this time around because of that increased time to kill so you're still going to probably kill in the same two shots but they need more shots to kill you so 
they've done away with like the super long range i'm just gonna one shot you with a shotgun but they kind of kept them in line for what they're supposed to be which is a very uh powerful close range weapon for high mobility just being in the mix and taking out a lot of people and i've had a lot of fun leveling the shotguns in this game which is a huge pro for me biggest complaint with multiplayer aside from the attachments i said before the armory unlock system is trash it's just straight trash and i hate it and the fact that you have to win games is good and bad and i've and i've seen this from other people as well it's good because i've never seen people stressing so hard over winning a game in call of duty it's not like they're ultra sweating to win right but people are actually playing the objective they're actually trying you get down to the wire and it's really fun and it leads to tight matches and and good gameplay because i think the game works better when people are trying to rally around the objective because then you you have more predictability of where people are moving and where the engagements are going to happen and how to set up and it's just more fun that way so it's good that this is happening but now it just feels devastating to lose because you just spend all of that time and you're not unlocking anything so in case you're not aware the armory unlock system is the new thing where instead of getting a lot of the stuff in the game by leveling up you have to unlock it through daily challenges. You select what you want to unlock. It has a cost, a certain number of like, let's say tokens, challenge tokens to unlock that thing. And then once you obtain those things, it unlocks. You get three daily challenges every day. That's three tokens. And then after that, you unlock the bonus, which is every time you win a match, you get a token. Most things cost three tokens to unlock. Others cost five, others cost eight. There's variants but there is a lot of stuff to unlock so now you're pressured if you want to unlock everything relatively quickly into winning a lot of matches my win-loss ratio is like dumb at this point it's really really high because i have always before this been the type of guy who actually cared more about my win-loss than i ever cared about my kd so this suits me perfectly but it still changes how the game plays and it makes the progression unlocks very slow. I also think it's nice to have something to work towards, but it, this kind of feels like something that only matters now. It's not going to matter later on. It's not going to matter once most people have the things that they want unlocked. So it's like a half step in a direction that's not very well executed and is just mostly annoying. So they really need to rework this system like i said you can't have a call of duty game without putting some stupid thing in it without putting your foot in your mouth at some point right but aside from that the actual multiplayer is the best it's been in a long time the game feel is right on point movement is right on point the ttk is right on point and it feels kind of retro and fun uh, a lot of the weapons have this balance feel where they're not like the ridiculous lasers that we had back in modern warfare 2 and modern warfare 3 the, the original ones uh, but they're not as crazy trying to be realistic as the newer ones either they're kind of in the middle which fits well with that increased ttk as well it, it it really feels tight it feels like a really well designed and balanced multiplayer game with those downsides of things like the attachments the maps and the armory unlock system addition in post uh sbmm it's in the game it's still there i don't know there's so many factors that depend what time you're playing what server you're playing all of these things to me it feels maybe a little bit less strong than modern warfare 2 but also the game just launched so there's plenty of people i don't know i think it's just the same as it always has been if you have an issue with sbmm if you don't like it don't get the game if you know what you're getting yourself into and you can deal with the sbmm everything else in this review applies it's the best multiplayer has been in a while however is that enough is that enough to keep the call of duty train going i don't think so i this is as i said at the start this is the best call of duty and the worst call of duty it's a call of duty of extremes it has the worst campaign we've ever had and it has the best multiplayer that we've had in a while but it's got weird decisions that i don't know how it's going to affect player retention or how it's going to work at this point i kind of wish we went back to the old attachment unlock system or something zombies is a weird thing that i don't think is going to make dmz players nor zombie players truly happy it just feels like an L year for Call of Duty, except the multiplayer, which is still not 
exclusively positive. It's the best one we've had, and I really like the direction that it's going in, and that's why I'm making this video. I want a lot of these things to stay. I think the overall balance, the design of the map, since they're copying old ones, but kind of, there's some tweaks in there. The 150 HP, so the TTK is, it, this is all the right direction for Call of Duty, but it's such a monster now, and I haven't even touched on Warzone, right? Or what they're going to do with that, how it's going to shift everything, and how many people are even really playing Warzone, I guess a lot, I, I don't know. I feel like this is, ironically, the year that it's the clearest who is making the big decisions and who is actually leading this and making it move forward. The same year of the Microsoft acquisition, the year that we get the best multiplayer, the return of multiplayer in the way that I actually enjoy it, is also the worst year for Call of Duty. It's a disappointing year that feels very divided, very fractured, very aimless. Like, what? where do we go from here? Because we're just... There's just so many things that are being done at the same time between DMZ slash zombie slash Warzone slash multiplayer slash trash campaign that, like, something needs to change here. I don't know if next year is going to be, like, Black Ops 5 or something, which I think would bring in a lot of people, I'm sure, but, like, the game needs to be tightened up and follow some more decisions. It needs to do something big to really stay. And this is, for me... The best and worst year for Call of Duty in, in almost ever. But what does that mean if you're watching this video and not just for my opinions as a random person on the internet, but as somebody that's not sure if you want to buy it? Well, that's why I made it. If you're looking for a campaign, this isn't really barely worth your time. If you're a Zombies fan, this ain't it, Chief. If you're here just to play multiplayer, you're going to have a good time. You're going to enjoy it. I don't know if you're going to enjoy it as much or for as long as other games. I really think those multi the multiplayer maps really comes down to it, how long you want to spend on these maps if you've been there before. But yeah, depending on what you're looking for, this might be worth your money. It might not be. Uh, I, I have always advocated that one of the reasons Call of Duty is such a great purchase every year is because it has those three pillars and how good they are, that you always have a lot of content to enjoy if you're a person that likes most of the content maybe you only love one of them but you still engage with the others and this is the first year that i feel like man if you're not into multiplayer as your primary thing you're not gonna get it if you're like a zombies person but you like to dabble in multiplayer you maybe play with your friends from time to time and you enjoy the campaign you're screwed this year like if if you don't like the dmz thing yeah, the multiplayer is good, but that's it. That's all you're getting here. And that really decreases the value of the package for me. I'm a multiplayer guy, so I'm relatively happy. But I have these complaints and I have this worry about where the franchise is going and how much I would want it to change. It's just not there. It's not the same prestige package that it used to be. And the competition is getting fierce. If you're just looking for multiplayer... X Defiant is supposed to come out sometime. You can go play the finals if you're a PC gamer. I think that's a fantastic game, a great alternative. You know, options that are not exactly Call of Duty, but are still competitive shooters that you can have fun with your friends in are more now and gonna head there at some point. So I hope that helps you in your purchasing decision. And I hope that my general takes, my opinions on a lot of what's going on is worth it to somebody maybe even somebody at activision at the studio or other people in the community to use uh like i said not a cod tuber i'm a very very variety youtuber uh and if you like this video and you want to stick around remember to hit subscribe i upload more often than i should considering that uh, i think most people know me as a person who does very very long in-depth dives into things kind of like this one but this one is more unscripted than hey stick around i would love to have you in the community i've been mug thief thank you so much for watching and i will see you very soon